In this video, I will be doing an unboxing of the Zion Crane Weeble S Gimbal. I will also give you guys my first impressions and I'm going to show you guys how to set it up with your Sony APS-C or Sony mirrorless cameras in general. Now if you use another type of camera, stick around because there's a lot of information packed in here that maybe can benefit you and your gimbal use. But with all that being said, let's jump right into the video. Welcome back guys, it's your boy Will, back in the building with another video, and if you are new here, welcome. I'm Will, I make content right here on YouTube, and if this is something that you're into and you like what you see, maybe you should consider hitting subscribe. I just ended up ordering myself the Zion Crane Weeble S Gimbal, Zion, Zion, however you pronounce it, you know what I'm talking about. So I am very familiar with gimbals. My first gimbal was the Zion Crane Plus. I actually own two of those. The first one I ever had, I had it on a beach in Punta Cana. A wave hit it, salt water got in there, and then the, all the motors died. I ended up buying another Zion Crane Plus gimbal. And um, yeah, I've been vlogging with that one from 2018 to 2019. I was gonna actually purchase the Ronin S 2c ronin sc2 yeah i was gonna purchase that gimbal but after watching some reviews and stuff with it i really wasn't digging it like i didn't like the way that the underslung mold it was like you had to break it apart and yeah it just looked it weird to me anyways man we're gonna go ahead and unbox this gimbal and i'm gonna give you guys my first impression show you how to set it all up zion makes three versions of this gimbal the version that I have, this is the base version, and at the time I'm making this video, it is priced at $399. They also have a image transmission system bundle, then they have a follow focus bundle as well, but this is just the base. I don't get none of the other stuff. Okay, so the first thing you are greeted with is documentation. First thing you get is your manual. They also give you this service guide, which kind of looks like Finn from Adventure Time. You got your little mini tripod right here. You got your quarter 20 thread so that you can actually mount it onto the gimbal. The handle of this feels pretty good. It's real soft. The older gimbals did not have this. So you also have your Manfrotto style quick release plate. Next thing you have is your two lithium batteries. You also get a charger as well. You have five different cables inside of this case and all of these are various cables for different types of cameras. And of course the last thing, the main event, the thing that we're all here for is going to be your gimbal. And here it is right here in all of its glory. To me it feels plasticky. It's definitely made out of plastic right here on the bottom handle portion on the side right here you do have a mounting option it's a quarter 20 thread mount so you can add on accessories on the top right here you have a spot for your tripod mount when you want to go into under slung mode and then boom now you got your under slung mode one good thing about this gimbal that i really like that i hated about my older gimbal is it now has a locking mechanism this is your roll axis lock you have a tilt axis lock right here. So, or well, roll, this is the roll axis. Then you have another lock right here, which is like your tilt up and down. This whole bottom portion is plastic, but the motors are actually metal. So that's a good thing. I would be afraid to drop this though. But um, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and uh, balance this thing on a gimbal. I mean, we're gonna balance the camera on this gimbal. So to balance it, first thing you wanna do is put your tripod on at the bottom. It's gonna make this so much easier. Go ahead, put your batteries in. The batteries go right here at the bottom, kind of like where the handle is right here. For balancing, I am gonna show you with the Sony 6300. The biggest lens that I have is this 18 to 105G lens. So. We're gonna be using this as an example since it's pretty heavy. All right, let's go. Now I've done this plenty of times, so hopefully I'm good at it in this video. So that way I look cool. So the first thing you really need to do is grab your quick release system. All right, so the next thing that you're gonna do is take your screw that comes with it. Uh, you get a total of three screws and you get one for the plate 
and then you also get another one for the riser which i forgot to mention but uh the riser is right here as well first thing you're going to do is take your provided screw which is your quarter 20 you're going to take it all the way to the zero mark and you're going to screw it in like so very handy to just get a screwdriver to do so it can be difficult but you could use like a coin if you want it all right then you are going to go ahead and you know the bottom screw and you're gonna screw the quick release plate onto your camera. Yeah, just screw it in there real good. Get it nice and tight. You wanna make sure that this is straight as well. And I honestly never really use these, the lens holder. I never use these on my gimbals. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off because you don't really need it. The next thing you're gonna do is grab a gimbal and you're gonna slide this on. The way you basically slide this on is there's an arrow right here that shows you the direction that you want to go there is a little latch right here you press to bring it into place and now as you see it's able to slide back and forth without falling off before you do this you want to ensure that you obviously have like your battery your sd card if you're going to use any nd filters or any type of filters go ahead and put it on the gimbal as well um take your lens cap off you definitely want to do that you want to be behind the gimbal like so and i'm going to go ahead and unlock the axes so as you see it's all unlocked it's, i got fluid motion now i'm going to go ahead and lock the rotation and i'm also going to lock the, the side axis the first thing that i always do when i balance a gimbal is i work on the tilt action and the goal here is to balance the gimbal there's like a sweet spot and it's going to depend on the lens and the camera setup but you have to find that good middle ground you're going to use this lever on your left to tighten it up you see it's kind of front heavy a little bit so we're going to go ahead and balance this axis now and this is for the also the tilt as well and the goal for this one is you want to make sure that the camera can stay in place without falling forward or backwards you want to do these like little micro adjustments so as you see it's pretty balanced good and it's still a little top heavy okay so like i said it looks like i need to slide the plate back some you have to be very patient with this because it can be a little frustrating when you're first doing it but uh we got patience though y'all we got patience and as you see it's back heavy so that means it has to go forward a little bit a little bit goes a long way you see now it's going forward so we gotta come back some looking for that perfect sweet spot all right, so as you see, it is staying perfectly fine. Now we're gonna balance this axis right here. And it actually looks pretty good uh, where it's at. For the tilt action, you have to actually adjust the plate and also this uh, up and down portion right here. What the goal of this is to get it so wherever you move it and you move your hand, the camera just stays right exactly where it is. Another good thing to note is, as you see, this side up, obviously that side is supposed to be up. But uh, we're going to go ahead and unlock this axis, and let's see. So as you see, it's leaning towards the left, so we're going to move it back to the right. And with this adjustment, there's an adjustment right here in the back, and you're going to slide left to right. So now it's leaning to the right, and we're going to get, now we're going to lock that. Okay, it's still leaning to the right, so we gotta move it to the left a little bit. Okay, so as you see right now, the gimbal is pretty much is balanced as far as uh, up and down and also left and right. Because the goal, you wanna move the camera to any spot and it's not supposed to go the opposite way, it's just supposed to stay there. So that's a pretty balanced gimbal, if I must say. All right, so now we're gonna unlock the last latch which is the rotation. And the way you do this is you just lean it to the side. So as you see, it's spinning. It's spinning to the right, so we have to move it back. Okay. 
So let's see now. So that is actually pretty good right there. The weight isn't moving it, it's just it's staying pretty still. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much how you balance it. Remember guys, be patient, move it ever so slightly because a little bit goes a long way. For Sony cameras, the cable that you want to use is the USB to multi USB. And this will give you functionality to stop record and start record. With uh, other brands, you can adjust the settings right from the gimbal but for some reason sony doesn't do it and the first thing that i'm going to do is turn on the gimbal you press down for the menu and you click the right button to go into that setting or you click the left button to go back and you click the rotation to go up and down the first thing you're going to do is hit this down arrow which is the menu you want to go to motor and you want to click on auto now this is the auto tune function so be aware when you hit the auto tune it does this little funky jittery motion but don't be alarmed it's, it's supposed to do that before they used to use this auto tune feature you used to could choose either low medium or high but now they uh, have a function called auto tune which basically will determine the weight of the camera and the lens setup for how strong the motor should move. And you can also customize this. A good thing to know is if you wanna customize the uh, motor power, you do have to auto-tune before. And I highly recommend you do the auto-tune every time you do a different setup. Next step, you wanna to go to camera. You wanna choose your camera. In my case of this video, I'm using Sony. Another thing good to know is the angle. So let's say for instance, your angle is off for some reason. You can click on this menu right here. If you click the right onto that, you can micro adjust the roll. Uh, but mine seem to be okay right now, so I'm not gonna mess with that. If it's your first time getting a gimbal, you can look on YouTube, online, and try to figure this out. It could be, you know, like a job. It could be like a nine to five job, just to figure out the whole gimbal. Sony only has the capability to record and stop record and also provide power to your camera it's really awesome especially if you're using the older sony cameras which has these little mp50 batteries uh we all know that these don't really last long so it's really good that it can actually charge your camera with the gimbal batteries and that actually does take more power from the gimbal so you may not get the whole 14 hours but um i hope that uh you guys got some information out of this video i'm going to do another video about the zion crane we will ask gimbal and in that video i will be going over all of the app functions and also the modes that you can do with the gimbal thank you so much for watching if you enjoy please make sure you give this a thumbs up share it with a friend if you think somebody else can benefit from it i'll catch you guys next week in my next video deuces <laughs>